What's up YouTube? Today we're looking at the different focus modes and the different focus areas on the Sony a6400. However, this should be applicable to most of the Sony series including the 6000, 6600 and some of the a7s would have the same features. So I'm using the Sony a6400 at the moment. It's my favorite camera and I still think it's the best damn camera you can get for under a thousand dollars packed with features as I'm going to show you today. So let's get started right now. So the first focus mode on any of these Sony cameras is AFS. AFS stands for autofocus single shot. As you can see at the moment, I'm in AFS and I've also got the wide angle zone for the focus area. So that means that my face generally will be in focus at the moment. Now the cool thing about AFS is if you actually focus and excuse me if I'm looking over to the monitor on the side, I'm just trying to see if everything's working. If you hold your shutter button now down halfway, it'll actually hold and lock that focus on my face, which is the primary thing that it's been focused on. And if you stick something else in front of the screen, it better not lose focus. Because else, what am I doing here, right? You can see it maintains focus on the subject you first hit. Now that'll actually happen until you let go of the shutter button or you indeed take a photo. So there we've taken a photo, now it's lost focus. Now if I put something up in front of the screen, it should technically focus. There we go, it just took a little bit of time. Take it away and focus us back. So that is AFS, let's move on. You don't need to actually go to the menu for this, you can just put the, push the FN button above your screen. However, if you still want to use the menu button, all you need to do is push the menu and then on page 5-14 of camera page 1, you'll see your focus modes and your focus areas over there. We'll come back to the AFA, let's just go look at AFC next, but this will make more sense just now. So AFC basically stands for continuous autofocus. It's really good if you're shooting wildlife or sporting events, maybe you want to go to your kid's soccer event. AFC would probably be the best for that kind of thing, especially if you're vlogging. Most people just leave their camera in AFC a lot of the time and probably true for a lot of other cameras. By the way, if you actually look at the corner of the screen, you will see that little green indicator. When it's fully lit green, it just means the subject is in focus that you're actually holding a shutter button for. If it starts flashing, like notice how it's flashing at the moment, that is meaning that it's, it can't actually focus at the moment, it's trying to get focus. So you will notice in different modes, like on my dial at the moment, I'm in program auto. If I'm actually holding the shutter button, that little green indicator has the two brackets around it, which basically is the same thing as being in focus, that the subject's in focus. However, it will be tracking the subject. So that's the only difference that I could see. I've actually turned autofocus face detection, eye detect autofocus off at the moment. And that's just because it sometimes interferes with the different modes I'm trying to show you at the moment. If you want to turn off face or eye detection, then you just need to go to 6-14 and click on face-eye priority in AF and just click that off. The face detection takes precedence over all of the other settings, so it kind of interferes with things. So the Sony a6400 covers about 84% of the screen. It's got 425 phase and contrast auto detection points, which you can see as they come up, and it should actually track you all across the screen in most areas. Automatic autofocus, and our reason I left this one is because it's kind of a bridge between single focus and continuous autofocus in that it uses both those methods. If you're holding your shutter button down half, it'll actually lock focus on a subject if it's not moving. If it starts moving again, it starts refocusing. So it's kind of in the middle of AFS and AFC. If the actual subject you're tracking with AFA is actually moving too quickly, the autofocus motors can't actually switch quick enough between AFS and AFC. In that case, it's probably better that you just use AFC for your focusing. It's continuously trying to hit that focus. So if it finds a hand in the way, it's actually going to try to hit that focus. But if everything settles down, then you're good. Sorry, I'm probably look like a crazy person across the screen, but I'm trying to illustrate all this stuff. Direct manual focus. This is such a game changer. And let me show you how it works. Inside here, you'll see there's a DMF, which is direct manual focus. When you click on that, let me show you how it works. It's actually really powerful. So while holding your shutter button down to focus, all you need to do is adjust your manual focus on your lens and you'll see it'll actually zoom in. So I've got my shutter button down halfway and I'm just adjusting my lens focus ring at the front and you'll see it zooms into the image. That little dial at the bottom is actually telling you how far the focus is away from your lens and you can really dial in your focus and take your shot. Here's another example, just holding your shutter button and adjust your focus ring, it'll automatically zoom in. As soon as you push your shutter button all the way, it'll actually zoom out and take the photo.
manual focus now you just have to click on the mf and then you're going to that that's a common mode and that just basically means you can actually focus yourself and as you can see it zooms in wow there's some real bad skin there remember at this point you have your shutter button pushed in halfway so if you push it in all the way it'll take a photo and zoom out and there's your image or your video depending on what you want to do but that's pretty cool manual focus Let's move on to the different focus zones, which is really important. There's some critical stuff in here that you need to know. So I've set my focus mode back to AFC, as you can see, and we're gonna move on to the focus zone. So if you press your menu, let me just go to the menu. Actually, let's go to the menu as well. If you go to the actual menu, you'll see your focus area is also on page dash one AF1, which is autofocus one, page five of 14. You'll see there's a focus area at the bottom and all you need to do is click that and that'll take you to the same page if you click the function button on your camera. So as you can see the first area, you can scroll through the different zones, but the focus area, let's set that to wide. And that just basically means as much as possible of the screen is in focus and all those autofocus points across the screen are in use. It technically should pick up focus from over here. Yes, there we go. Come on, focus, damn it, focus, cooperate. Okay, so that's focusing in the wide area. Focus area, we've got the zone focus area. You can actually move this thing around by pushing the little control wheel on your camera, move the focus area. So if you did want to use zone and you wanted to put that in focus, then technically, if you were this side, you wouldn't be in focus, but it's only hunting in that right-hand side, as you can see. So that's zone. I suppose for some photographers who want to do the rule of third stuff, it's kind of useful, but let's move on. Center, this is a really cool one, especially if you're doing portraits, but as you can see, the center spot is not movable. Notice how if I move the road wireless go out of the middle of the center of the frame, it doesn't really focus as well there. And if you push it back into the middle, you get a much better focus. Focus areas is flexible spot. Now this is kind of a cool one in that you can make it large if you press right or left on your dial you can make it large medium or small so let's just make it small for this example and press the middle icon to select and then you can actually move around notice there's a flexible spot there notice we have some depth of field here and if i wanted to focus on that front camera instead i just need to move the flexible spot along using my little control wheel and then press my shutter button in to focus more on the osmo action in the front so the next one is expand flexible spot now that one's kind of useful if you actually click on your thing and you use your dial to move this around you'll see there's another box surrounding the smaller box so the smaller box is actually your focus point and the pixels around that area on the wider box is where it'll look if it can't find the item that you actually centered on the smaller box. So it's kind of just like a larger area for the focus to take place in. It's kind of similar to flexible spots, so just with a few more pixels around it, but it's pretty cool. Now there is the last one that's really cool. And then if we go into our menu, click on focus areas again, we'll see there's a tracking flexible spot. Now this is actually pretty useful. Notice if you touch the screen, you'll see the screwdriver. And if you actually hold the shutter button, it'll track that item while holding the shutter button, which is really nice for video and movies. And if you move that screwdriver around from left and right, you can also drag on your screen to move the focus point just by tapping and dragging. And it's actually pretty quick. If you notice, if I move the screwdriver left and right pretty quickly, it still maintains focus on that area. If your touchscreen isn't working, then go to 9-9, -9, which is movie page two, and go to the function of touch operation and make sure touch tracking is enabled. You need to be in autofocus continuous for these tracking modes to work. The Sony cameras are kind of strange because sometimes you'll change the setting and it'll tell you you can't do that in that mode. And it's a bit of trial and error to figure out what you can do. Like even if you change the dial at the top, sometimes it'll stop you from using a certain mode. And that's just how the camera works. That's the built-in firmware or software. So let's just look at the zone one, tracking zone. If you actually click on that, you'll see there is the zone. And using your dial, you can move it around as per usual. Now, the cool thing about this, I don't know if it's really useful, but the difference is it basically just tracks in that zone. So if you weren't in that zone, sorry, opposite side, then you would see it's only looking for me in that particular zone. If I came in that zone and I pressed focus again, it's got me and it'll continuously try to track, but you need to be in that zone for it to track, 
which is pretty cool if you had some kind of subject that was walking around and you didn't want to focus on the people on the left hand side in the congregation of a wedding let's say but you did want to focus more on the bride's family on the other side who knows we can see there's a tracking zone a wide which would mean that the entire screen so if we just select that one you can't actually move anything around because it's actually tracking the entire zone of your screen so from this side to around there and it seems to go all the way to the other side of the screen but holding in your shutter button allows you to track that feature and that's pretty useful so that's the end of this video i hope you got something out of it if you did maybe hit that subscribe button leave a like or a comment i really appreciate it and see you again next time